Hi, my name's Simon Bingham and this is part of my video series on the JNCIE Enterprise Track. Um, today's subject is going to be authentication and authorization. Um, so what's this all about then? So this is really talking about how you determine whether you, uh, someone is trying to log into the box to, 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 um, to undertake an administration task is a legitimate user and how you uh, determine what tasks they're allowed to um, to undertake on the box. So first of all, uh, the first thing we need to understand with Tune Juniper is that there's two types of user. Um, there's a root user, which is uh, configured under the set system root authentication. Um, that's the, you know, there's only one root user allowed and he's allowed to do pretty much everything. And then there are what are called non-root users. Now this is where you might configure different users with different names and, and different different capabilities. Now Juniper has the has the uh, concept of classes of users. So there's four predefined classes: as operator, read only, super user, and authorized. Um, super user is to all intents and purposes the same as the root user. So if you want to better access everything and do everything, then you um, when you create a user account, you put them into the super user class. Um, now there's a second little bit of information and we need to um, disseminate here, is is where where are you authenticating to? Well, there's two ways you can authenticate. Um, well, there's, there's a couple really, but um, obviously locally on, on the box, or you can use something called a radius or a TACAC server. Now, a radius or a TACAC server is really just an external um, database. So obviously we don't want to go and configure every single password and username on every single box on the entire network and have all the problems with synchronizing these up. So, you know, if you scale beyond more than a handful of devices, um, you really want to start thinking about using radius. Now, um, radi radius, um, the radius servers um, come in various different flavors um, what you can do is you can use a, a Microsoft has something called Internet Authentication Services which dovetails I believe into Active Directory and all that sort of thing so you can have all this tied into AD and and uh, and that's uh, and that's sort of thing you needed there are other there are other radio servers um, I believe um, actually Juniper bought a company called Funk who um, had a thing called Steel Belted Radius, which is still around, and that's another um, kind of very good st uh, standalone radius server. And what actually happens is that basically, when you try to log log into the box, it it forwards your credentials and you know your your name and credentials to the radius server, and then the radius server comes back saying whether you can access the device or not. Um, the values that it returns are called uh, actually called return list attributes. There's also some other things that are a bit about scope outside the scope of this video. Checklist att att attributes, but all you need to know really is you can check with another device. So what we're going to do here, just without further ado, I'm going to um, let's have a look. It's just um, I'm going to um, configure some user accounts. So right, let's just. Um, Let's just configure the root user. So it would be set system. So let's do top. Set system, root authentication, plain text password. That's how you for the root user. If you've got this far and you don't know how to, to, to do that, then you've got issues because um, you've not configured the box because you have to configure the root authentication password to save the config. But let's create some, um, let's create a custom user let's create a non root user so what we do is you set system login user let's create Simon now I need to give this a class now let's have a look at classes we have available now these are the predetermined classes so these are the ones that come you know come pre configured configured you can create some of your own here though if you wish to so I'm going to create myself as a super user and then I'm going to do more authentication. It's going to be play text password, and then just type in the password. Right, and we commit this. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up a, a, another session with the same box. Right. 
So I've now logged in with this new Simon account that I've created. Um, hopefully looking at this, uh, if we do a quick show configuration. So we can certainly do some show commands. Can we, can we configure the box? Yes we can. Obviously we can't go through everything here to show what we can and can't do, but it gives you an idea. And I'm also going to show you something quick actually. I'm going to do, uh, let's do exit, let's do request, request system. Right, you see I have the ability to power off the box. So I'm going to use this to demonstrate something. So I showed you some classes a moment ago, those predefined classes that we had on the box. What we can do is we can create one of our own classes and determine what that class can do. So if you wanted to, um, you know, restrict the commands that a particular set of users could could um, could, could execute on the box, then you could do it via this. Um, what we'll do is we'll what we'll do is restrict whether you can power off the box remote remotely because power off is um, particularly brutal. It's a one-way thing. It shuts down the box and doesn't power it back up again. So you need manual intervention intervention to bring the box back up. Um, obviously, one of these, you know, with any route, so there's a myriad of ways in which you can break them. But um, hopefully, if you use commit confirmed every time you commit a config, I mean, um, in production environments, I have to say I always, always, always use commit confirmed. Um, the only reason I don't do it here is because this is a lab environment, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm doing things quickly. So let's just um, go edit system login. Let's do set user Simon. Oh no, let's just um, create our own class first of all, sorry. Set class, and let's call it not quite super user. Right, and let's give it a permissions level. Now this is the, now what, what Juniper have done here is rather than you having to think of every command that someone might want to type in. They've basically designed some permissions here which um, in effect you know are sort of fairly sens sensible really. Um, so what we're going to do here and, and this this the, you know this this allows you the access to a whole particular area of the command line or um, is indicated here so I mean obviously you can't break down every single we're here for, be forever about trying to break down every single command that you could or couldn't type in under one of these permissions categories but you can see from the subject lines they're fairly sense, sense, sensible so I'm going to give my not quite super user permission to do everything then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to deny access to something now if you remember the quick slide or say slide here but my, my notes um, now you define the permissions that relate to a class but then after that it processes if you like the deny so what this really means is the my commands and deny configuration and allow commands allow config configuration take priority over permissions so even though I've said this um, not quite super user has all permissions what we can do is we can restrict what a command they can execute so we can do class not quite super user deny command um, now let's use a let's use a um, regular expression. Sorry, it's getting quite late. And let's do power off. Right, so that. So I've created a class called Not Quite Super User. You can do everything, but I'm going to deny the command power off. So what I should be able to do now, I've got my user, Simon, is still associated with the class super user, that's the predefined one. So we'll just have to chain change that. So let's do set user Simon class uh, not quite super user. Right. All well, that's committing, I'm just gonna Just to cut that. Sorry, I have secure CRT. Remember, most of my passwords, so I'm having to log in by hand in this case. So let's do 108. Simon. Oops. Right, so we're logged in again. 
Now, if you remember before, I demonstrated the fact that I could actually power off the box if I wanted to. So let's do request system. But it's not even there. Look. And if we do a question mark, we can see we can reboot. We can do lots of other things, um, but we can't um, power off the box. Um, Okay, just to prove it to you, if we went request system run request system power off, you'll see it's still it's there. Request system. Yeah, we still have it there. So this is where I'm logged in as a root user. This is where I'm logged in as a Simon, and you can see the power off now has been denied. It's been denied, denied by that um, reg regular expression that we put in. Okay, um, I'm probably going to do some more videos around this area. Um, we're going to configure Radius and um, get all that working, um, but that will be a subject for another video. Okay, thank you and bye.